So here's, here's what I am giving you as a challenge for our church, Limitless and online, that every time you walk into this place, I want you to have your notebooks. I want you to have your phones out. I want you to be taking notes. Because where we're going, there's a trajectory going to take place, and it's our responsibility to do your part. Now, all throughout this sermon, I'm going to do that. I'm going to say you have to, and y'all got to be remembering to scream, do your part. All right? So y'all go ahead and we preach today. Y'all ready? You, pra- you ready to practice? One, two, three. Do your part. All right, let's do it one more time. Do your part. All right, why? Because it's in me. So I got to do my part because if he's in me, right, then I got to do my part because he's already told me in his word that I can do exceedingly abundantly more than I could ever Right? Y'all, we a word, church. Y'all know this word. He says what? He says, trust in the Lord. Proverbs 3. What does he say? Trust in the Lord. And? 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 He will direct your path. How about delight yourself in the Lord and he will? But what's your part? Huh? Okay. And then you got to do what? Keep knocking. And the door will be open. So that means we're constantly doing our part. Right? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. So today, I want to take us on a twist. Buckle your seatbelt. Sometimes, just because God is quiet doesn't mean he's not close. Because a teacher is always silent during the test. Because if I can't trust you here, how can I trust you here? So what you're praying about is obviously bigger than where you're at. Are you with me praying about it? And if he says that to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, all your ways and not him, he will direct your path, then why would he not give you what you're praying for unless you're not ready? So you've been praying about stuff, but your character can't keep up with your purpose yet. Why? Because he's seen you when nobody else has seen you. Right? Well, does that mean I can't ever fall apart? Absolutely not. You can have a whole meltdown. You can have a strong cry, but you got to get up. Some of y'all still down from something your daddy did 48 years ago. And you don't know, you don't even remember the details. But in you, you refuse to let it go because the enemy cannot take you out. He's wearing you out. And he does it through people, places, and things. He does it through soul ties. He does it through generational curses. But it's in me to break the generational curses, right? So sometimes God will take you to it so that you can realize how strong you are when you go through it. Like he had to wreck your plans because your plans were about to, right? So usually what we mean when we say God is with me is only when things are going our way. God's with me. Oh, you pray, you pray and prophesy. But the minute you find yourself in a, in a place where you can't hear God, you stop. Because we only believe that God is with us when he's doing things. It's hard to know God's will when you've already decided in your head what you want the will to be. Oh, I want God's will to be done. Do you? Really? Because I have never known anything to be birthed without a process. And it is usually very painful. So while you're getting stuck in the process, God is saying this process was purging you to get you to that place. And when God comes on the scene, he moves fast. So basically, we have to consult God in whatever we're praying for and then move in it. So what we do a lot of times is we consult God and then we stop. I don't hear him. Oh, oh, he's talking. But he ain't talking the way you probably want him to talk. Because in order for you to grow, you got to go through the breaking. Right? Well, that's stupid. Well, it works. Like any time there's ever been a birthing I've ever seen, it took a woman screaming her head off. She hates her husband when she is delivering a baby. And the minute that baby comes out, she's like, oh, I love you so much. Oh, my God, let's make another baby. Because the purpose of the pain was to bring a life. And you couldn't have got a life without the pain. 
Because anytime a great purpose is in your life, you're going to walk through some things that God is saying it's going to hurt for a minute, but if I can trust you to keep moving, right? So I'm going to go from Mark, say Mark 5, 28. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe... I will be healed. Now, what's the key word in that? If, for she. Now, let me break this down for you. This woman had been broken for 12 years. She had bled for 12 years. She had been told by doctors and everybody else, there ain't nothing I can do for you. And she had been in this place for 12 years. But the shift took place when she thought to herself something different than where she was. So where I am, it looks like nothing's changing. But I know in order to get something I ain't never got, I got to do something I ain't never done. So I got I to gotta process the situation, right? If I can just think. I won't stay broken forever. I'm not going to mourn this death forever. I'm not going to stay single forever. I'm not going to, right? I'm going to think myself into a place. If I can just see the hem of his garment. If I can just believe, right? But you must. Where y'all at? Baptist, where y'all at? You must do your part. Because the greatest, the edge of your greatest blessing will be in the place of your greatest frustration. So God's going to pivot you when you're at your greatest frustration. Anybody frustrated in here? Anybody? Anybody frustrated? It's okay to be frustrated. You're walking through something you didn't see happening. It's just that's the way God does it. Right? The rain falls on the just and the unjust. Your blessings are at the end of your pride. Your blessings are at the end of your self-righteousness, right? We are so famous as a social media world to fake it and never make it because we don't want people that don't even know our middle name to know we ain't got it together. We will spend money that we ain't got. We will rob Peter to pay Paul. We will carry a Gucci with nothing in it because I need you to know I'm successful. Because somewhere in us, it ain't about the joy of the Lord is my strength. It's about the joy of me looking like I got something I ain't got. Because your approval matters to me more than his approval, right? So it's understanding that until I get this frame of mind that, God, you're going to do a new thing. And Romans 8, 28 said that you're working all things together for my good. So I'm not going to stay here in this depression. I'm going to allow you to do your part. I'm going to do my part, right? So we got to understand that with him by our side, he's going to shift it, and he's going to do a suddenly, not a 10-year thing. Because I preached about this a couple of weeks ago. God has a propensity to use the time you got left. See, we're praying We're praying for God, right, to restore something. I've lost 18 years in that marriage. God is going to bless you for lasting 18 years. So if you've only got 20 years left, he's going to bring the love of your life in. And you're going to have more love in that 20 years than you would have ever had in that 48 years. Why? Because God is an exceedingly abundantly kind of God. And he will take the years you have left. And as soon as you surrender everything over to him and say, I'm not carrying this baggage of blood. Uh, Praise Kim! So God picks the worst situations. To create the best miracles, and I like to call it creative collaboration. It's a creative collaboration. How he can take a divorce and make you so much better after that divorce. When I walked through a divorce, I did not get on social media and say a word. Why? Because it takes two to tango. So I had to realize that God was using a creative collaboration of my wrong choices 
to get me to this place, and I wasn't going to waste the hell. So I began to pray, God, why didn't this thing work? What's wrong with my picker? That's a problem. You picking them. Now, I don't want to be single forever. Okay? I don't want to be like one of them, them preachers is single forever. Now, I want me a bouncing, come wow, wow. Okay? Okay. But I got to get whatever's going on in here that messed that up fixed. So the next time, God's going to use the timing that I got left to cram me a what, what, what? Creative collaboration. So he allowed me to walk through what I walked through because of my own stinking thinking. And then he said, now I'm about to use that better than Free Life College. I'm about to, oh, 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 girl, you better buckle your seatbelt. So it's when you know that God is waiting on your movement to do your part, then you stop looking at how far you got to go and think of how far you've come. Sometimes we have to detach from the spirit of entitlement and assistance. Because when we're broken, we automatically start feeling sorry for ourselves, right? It's basically the idea that you need help or people are supposed to help you. I need help. Y'all know those people that will call you 15,000 times and now you refuse to answer the call. Because every doggone time you give them an advice, they never follow it. You're like, oh no, you ain't wasting my, oh everybody ain't my assignment and you ain't it. I can't waste my time on one person that refuses, that's entitled to feeling like I gotta be there to assist them when you ain't willing to do your part. When my babies came out of my body, it did not take the doctors pulling them out. It was push! Nobody else made me push but me. So if in the natural, we have to, you guys are like, I don't know. Oh, okay, guys, the kidney stone. You had a whole kidney stone. They ain't got nothing to pull the kidney stone out. You got to push. That's the same thing with your healing. So it's the idea that we need people to assist us and help us, and then we get mad because they didn't, right? But my Bible says, oh, man, no, oh, no, no man, nothing but love, Right? So my challenge in this sermon in the next 10 minutes, I'm challenging you to move forward to today, maybe 20, from whatever is holding you back. Because God is waiting on you to realize who you are and what you possess. Right? So it's not saying do anything without God. It's saying make him the center. You know how you kind of know if he ain't the center? How? How? Ain't nothing going right. Because I am the queen of validation in here. I am proof that you can walk through hell and come out on fire. So it's picking my legs up and moving. And it's getting people in your ear that can pull you. God sends voices in your life. It's called accountability. It's called your pastor. Is called the mentor. Somebody that is, their fruit speaks for itself. So that you can sit down with these people and say, do you think this is right? And then you've got to be knowing they love you enough to say, no, nah, this ain't right. Because the enemy uses collateral, what did I say, what's that word? Collateral collaboration with the wrong people too. Right, he will have people in your life that is medicating you and, uh, oh, girl, yeah, just stay there. You ain't never going to be nothing else anyway. Your whole family living by uh, the lake and a river on a trailer. You ain't never going to succeed. All right. Oh, this pandemic took all your money. You will be literally walking out everything that person said. Who's your tribe? Who's your posse? Who do you listen to? I don't need no man. That's why you're single. My wife ain't going to tell me nothing. That's why you're single. Because any time in life, God shows us in his word that he did not, Jesus did not even perform a miracle until Father blessed him. There's always people in your life that can see things through lenses that you can't see. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He was setting a precedence. 
and principle in this earth that affirmation brings authority. Affirmation brings authority. Right? When I, a few months ago, I was at World Harvest, and my spiritual father is Pastor Ron, uh, Rod Parsley, and he ordained me as a bishop. And I'm like, I told everybody, I was like, you get the, you're going to be a bishop? I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't even know. T titles really don't mean anything to me, right? And I'm like, can women even be bishops? I don't even know. I, I'm just kind of out in these streets, like, loving people back to life. But when he laid his hands on me, there was a transference that took place in the realm of authority. I'm preaching different. I'm seeing different. I'm prophesying more than I've ever prophesied. I'm not here to play. Right? Why? Because there was an authority at that moment that was transferred because I allowed someone in my life to speak to me and tell me this is where you need to go. Because you got a whole bunch of people that you are pulling on a caboose. And if you ain't going higher, they can't go higher. So when you go to another level, they're going to go to another level. And they're going to they either catch your glow and catch the glory, or they're going to get left behind. Because in this season, God said, I'm not playing. I am blessing. I am blessing. So what we have to do is we got to consult God, and we got to move. The first thing we have to do, and we see it in this text, was we have to have a diagnosis. What's your symptoms? What have you been stuck in? Who have you been mad at? What do you talk about all the time? That's your diagnosis. What do you talk about all the time? The diagnosis of this woman was the issue of blood. Then we got to process the duration. The duration in our text was 12 years years so you gotta have a diagnosis then you gotta have a how long is it happening because it's a cycle then you gotta realize what has it brought to your life in our text it brought discomfort to this woman she was uncomfortable she was suffering then we also see in text that she was damaged damaged on several levels because she was damaged because she spent all her money and she couldn't go into public which meant she was isolated. And she had to announce herself when she came out of the house. The danger in our text that we see is that there was no cure. And her body was deteriorating. My question to you today is, what is your diagnosis? Maybe your diagnosis is, you ain't got no love. Maybe you're racist. Maybe you're lazy. Maybe you're a procrastinator. Maybe you get offended easily. Maybe you're fighting spiritual warfare. Maybe you need to break some generational curses. Maybe you don't love yourself. Maybe you put up with whatever. Anybody can do anything to you. You're like, well, I'm just one of those sweet people. What would Jesus do? Well, it's got you stuck. What would Jesus do? Everybody ain't your assignment. That's why you're, that's why you're tired. Right? So your diagnosis, your duration, your discomfort, your damage, and your danger. What is your diagnosis? If you can't diagnose it, if you can't diagnose it, stop being mad when people can't help you. Because God does everything through relationship. Anytime you get a promotion, it's usually somebody seeing you through somebody else. Or somebody giving a word. You go get a job, you get a promotion, it's usually through people, right? Relationships, that's why the enemy separates you, right? Because he doesn't want the people in your life to see your glow up to take you to another level. That's why you can't burn all your bridges. Oh, girl, I'm burning my bridge. You're going to burn it and not have a place to go back to. You done burned your bridge so much you ain't got nowhere to float. It's just me and Jesus. No, it's just you because you ain't listening to Jesus. You all thug now, right? Ain't nobody going to mess with me. Oh, don't you catch these hands. <laughs> oh, we ain't, right? This is me. Take it or leave it. We're leaving it, right? What is your diagnosis? If you can't diagnose it, you can't be mad when people can't heal it, right? Unqual and, then, and then we listen to people that are unqualified to diagnose us. 
you listen to people who are unqualified to diagnose you. This is what makes you toxic. You're listening to people who were never meant to diagnose you. What happens when their reaction causes you to react? What happens when you needed your daddy's approval so bad and he was a loaf? What happens whenever you keep marrying the same man that looks like your dad over and over because you want your dad's approval that you never going to get? What happens when everybody in your life looks the same but with different faces? It's the law of draw because we are allowing other people's reactions to become our sickness. We let what they did to us get in us. And now we have these walls up. Her diagnosis was she was bloody. The duration was 4,236 days of constant blood. Now here's how my brain works. She already had a miracle. Because for 12 years she bled and didn't die. So how many times, because a miracle don't look like what we thought it was going to look like, we don't realize that there was already a miracle in the mere fact that you're still standing. You may not be where you want to be, but you ain't where you used to be. Right? This is why. Say, this is why. You need your feet down here at Limitless. you got to have a place. Where even if you live in Florida, you drive up once every month like you would to the, the gambling store in Mississippi. Because this place right here is a place that pushes you. We won't let you stop. I am like a fly. I will wear you out. What you doing? Where you at? Why you there? Because I see something in you because you didn't just choose me. God assigned me to you. Basically, a woman is deemed unclean for just living on her life, something she couldn't help. But the man with leprosy, you know, he did something. He did something. He, he partook in something he wasn't supposed to partake in. And he got leprosy, but yeah, he could walk out. But this woman who is just doing life and bleeding and don't even know what's up, she has to be hidden away. Why? Because the enemy will use isolation. He will have you looking in people's eyeballs. When you walk in a room and you already feel ashamed for what you did. And you look in their eyeballs and you see them look you up and down. And all of a sudden you go sit on the clearance rack. Or you fought forever for that marriage. And now here you are. sit at the Thanksgiving table with an empty chair. This was not the way your story was supposed to go. And now you're living in a world where people judge you off of labels. She's a divorcee. You ain't no divorcee. That's something that happened to you. That is not who you are. So she's deemed unclean. Because she allowed people to judge her off of just living. Now her bleeding could be your chronic, constant complaining. Your blood could be negative Nelly, Petty Patrick, my way or no way. What has your life of just living turned you into? I gotta prove myself. And I can only prove myself by all the retweets or the likes or how many people show up at my birthday or if I got a man on my arm or I don't. If I got the best hair, driving the best car because I'm trying to prove something to someone that don't even know 
And if they do and they judge you, they ain't your people. Because, baby, you ain't got to take no folding chair to no table. Because my God created you to build your own table. My God created you to take your value points away from people that make you feel like you can't never succeed. Right? Maybe you're a chronic mess maker. Maybe when you walk in a room, you bring a cloud. Maybe you're never satisfied. We may not be bleeding, but just leaking. I would think the leaking's worse than the bleeding. Because bleeding is going to get the emergency room's attention. So they're going to take me from the backs to the front. So if I'm just leaking... It's not crucial enough to get attention. So then we begin to cope. Because this has been going on forever. But now my insides are leaking. And now my marriage is going to hell in a handbasket. We don't even like each other anymore. I'm putting unfair pressure on him. I'm putting unfair pressure on me. And it was never really about each other. It was about the leaking. He didn't do nothing to me. She didn't do nothing to me. But it was about the leaking from what I never healed from. Now I'm bleeding on people that didn't cut me. And now I live in a constant state of trying to prove myself. And I'm tired. What's going on on the inside is now showing up on the outside. 365 days, she wakes up in blood, goes to bed in blood. And when you're leaking or bleeding blood, it makes you tired. It makes you weak. It makes your iron go down. Ramifications of not dealing with something head on. Now with social media, it's got us believing that we can just use a highlight reel to fix it. But after the thing went viral, you're still alone. You got the accolades, but you're still alone. Tired. Alone. It says in Mark 5, 26, she had suffered a great deal from many doctors. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better. In fact, she had gotten worse. So she suffered. And doctors knew she would never be able to get healed. So they just kept her comfortable. They gave her pain meds. You got a trauma bond. You're going to have this situation for the rest of your life. You're going to have PTSD forever. You're going to need this addiction forever. See, some of y'all got these people around you that gave up hope on you. So now you have a posse full of enablers. They the kind of friends that when y'all take a picture together, they make you look pretty too. You know how we are. We do ourselves. We make ourselves look like a doll, but we make them they, we leave them alone. Sometimes we have these people that they're they're quick to fix you temporarily too. Because it's the law of draw. Who is your posse? Many people fail because you got the wrong people diagnosing you. Maybe it's because you're ignorant. You just don't know no better. You're tired. Maybe you're arrogant. Because 
you already think you know everything. This is just me. This is who I am. They know how I am. Or maybe you're impotent. You're incapable beyond your power. You're like, I don't even know what to do. That's why you need a voice to help direct you. That will yell at you, and then you've got to sit at their feet, man. When I was walking through and I had my leak, I was 36, 37, 38 I would sit and listen I would overdose on preachers and motivational speakers and I would have that, that Bible app reading to me as I slept because I knew there was a leak in me that I couldn't fix without God I had to do my part. You know, the enemy is so cunning because he uses different mirrors, smoking mirrors. One of them is the forgetting mirror, which is a mirror that holds on to the trauma wound and forces you to forget painful memories because you feel like you deserve them. It's like getting rid of a narcissist. You ever, you ever been in a relationship with a narcissist? Dear God, you are, you are literally dying. You're like dragging yourself, but you can't let go of them because they've convinced you now that everything wrong with you was your fault. So one mirror is the mirror of forgetting. The next mirror is the mirror of sleep. When something tragic happens to you, you just want to sleep. You just want to escape the world. You want to go in, get on your video game, and just zone out until it passes. So the door of forgetting, the mirror of forgetting, the mirror of, of, of sleep, and another one is a mirror of madness. Where now you just feel crazy. There are times when the mind is dealt such a blow, it hides itself in insanity. And then what does doctors do? They put you on what? To make you more crazy. Because as long as you're not dealing with a situation spiritually, now you're dancing with it. Because you don't realize greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And the next mirror is the mirror of death. Hopelessness. A hope deferred makes the heart. Huh? That's it. And now we're feeling hopeless. This woman literally was in a place her in, for, for 4,236 days of the same thing. And now she's thinking maybe God can't because they didn't. So where are you in this process of diagnosis where now you believe God can't because they didn't? They dropped you. They walked out on you. We got to stop believing that their opinion is greater than God's promise. What they believe about me is not greater than what God has already promised. You got to stop and deflect. You got to literally go back to when this started. When did you feel the decline? Oh, it was about 12 years ago. Well, then you need to go back to 12 years and you need to take a seat. I got two weeks left of August, but I am not walking into September like this. So I'm going to sit down, just me and God, and God, I need you to take me back to wherever I was because I need a diagnosis so that when I come out of this thing, you can use the time that I've lost to take me to another another level. So I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to do my part. This woman with this issue of blood 
was in this place where she was isolated. And in her head, she finally thought that if I can get to the hem of his garment, if I can crawl, if I can roll, Whatever I got to do to get myself out of this situation, whether it is stop going the same way to work every day that I've always gone or sitting with the same people that I've always sat with, it is getting myself to a place where I literally sit in I'm sitting in it so that I can get the faith and the courage to get up and get myself out of the toxic cycles. Because God did not create you to be needy off of things that are not breathing. Medication, alcohol, drugs, sex with a million people, gossip, lying, dancing a pink pony on Friday. And pray, pray it on Sunday. I'm going to sit in it so God can reveal it so then I can motivate myself because Mark 5, 27 said she basically shut the door. She had heard about Jesus, it says. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched. That means she knew I got to get in the room. I got to... I got to get in the room. That means I got to face people that are looking me up and down. I got to go back and fix some situations of burned bridges. I got to get in the room. Says she heard Jesus. What did she hear? She heard this. In Mark 1, she heard that a man was healed in Capernaum. This is why you need a tribe where you see people flying. Because it builds your faith. She heard in Mark 1, 29 that Peter's mother-in-law was healed. Sometimes you got to go off a promise. Sometimes you got to look at someone else's miracle and say, if they can do it, I can do it. If God did it for them, God will do it for me. She heard in Mark 1 and 40, that a man with leprosy was healed. She heard in Mark 2, 1 through 13, that a paralytic was healed. She heard in Mark 5, 1 through 20, that a demon-possessed man was healed. She heard what he did for them, and she believed. If I can just get in the room. Praise Kim! If I can... Just believe. If I can just, even if it's, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm the top and not the bottom. If I can just get up, I don't care if I'm 78, 68, 48, 38. I'm going to assess the situation. While everyone was brushing up against Jesus, waiting for him. She said, oh, no, boo. I'm about to roll. I'm about to do whatever I got to do to touch the hem of his garment. You know what she did? Let me tell you all what she did. All thousands of people around. She didn't watch none of y'all. She got her gaze on where she was going. And she said, all I can see is that robe. I don't care what y'all do. I don't care if your posse tries to stop me. If I can just, she set her gaze and she got her focus. And wherever you focus, you go. Wherever you focus, you go. That's why when they're telling you, whenever you're riding a motorcycle, don't look at where you're at. Don't don't look at all this. You got to look at where you're going. And your gaze takes you to where, where is your gaze? Where is your gauge? Where's your gaze? What's your diagnosis? So basically, if you're going to do it yourself and break meds off you and your family and get unstuck, You must have the ability to catch what others missed. 
They missed it. They didn't see it. They never thought you were going to recover. They never thought you were going to be here. They were sleeping on you. I hope they got their rest, Miss Skittles. I hope they got their rest, Apostle Ramon, while you were thugging out. They were sleeping. She believed she could, so she did. She busted a faith move that didn't make sense. She said, 4,236 4, days I've been dealing with this issue, and I know this issue ain't God because God is not an author of confusion or sickness. He said, by his stripes I am healed. So today, blood, you are drying up. She touched him while everyone else was waiting for him. Touched means to cling. She got her focus. Mark 5, 28 says, For she thought to herself, If I can just touch his robe. Y'all see what she did there, right? The whole scripture. Thought. 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 You think what you listen to don't matter? You think who you're talking to all the time don't matter? Oh, it don't bother me. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but baloney. She thought. It is impossible to think on things above when you got people around you that are drilling holes in your boat and, and rowing with the other hand. You already know what you feel. Why are you still partaking in it? Well, what would Jesus do? He would let them be somebody else's assignment. Because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Right? Then let's, let, let me close with this. Mark 5, 29 through 34. It says immediately. So she thought, she thought. She moved. She got her diagnosis. She sat in it. She got up immediately. The bleeding stopped. What does she do? I can imagine. Like, I like to paint pictures, so I'm going to paint a picture. So all y'all staring at me like y'all do every Sunday. So she walks in this place and she's bleeding and she has a promise. If he did it for all those other people, today's my moment. She got her gaze and then she stopped looking at them anymore. I bet you she was just doing this. She's just looking at the end because she can see the end of his robe. But I'm not going to look up because if I look up, I'm going to doubt because you ain't a believer. You don't believe that I can get healed. So I, 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 I can't look at you, but I'm going to look and I'm just going to get my sight. And then I'm going to crawl. And then I'm going to grab the hem of his garment. Stand up on your feet in here like you got something to praise God for. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute. Immediately, she stopped bleeding, and she could feel in her body that she had been healed in her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out of him. Oh. So he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched me? His disciples said to him, What do you mean? 
who touched you? See the posse, even his own posse. Acting like he crazy. Now he like, oh, no, I know. I know somebody drove 10 hours to get in this house today. And, I, and you ain't going to tell me my miracle ain't in this room. The disciples said, look at the crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see. Then the frightened woman trembling realized of what had happened to her. And she came and fell to her knees. It was me. It was me. You don't know what you just did for me. I knew that if I could just change my thinking, if I could believe when nobody else believed in me, if I could take my eyes off of the natural and I could look in the spirit and I could realize he that started a good work in me, he is faithful to complete it. She fell to her knees. That's why you can't just have a half praise. What he done for me. Winning the lottery can't do for me. What he's done in my marriage, a therapist couldn't do. She fell in front of him and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made Go in peace. You will never see this place again. You won't smell like what you went through. It ain't going to tarnish you or taint you. What they said ain't going to stop you. In fact, I'm going to turn the slander into promotion. And every time they gossip on you, you are being elevated to another level. I'm going to put the meanest ones in the front. I'm preserving them so they can watch. As I elevate you, they going to know they should have never put their mouth on you. If I can just get you to praise your way out, I need some people up in Limitless and online to begin to give God a praise. You better open your mouth. Say, I'm ready. I'm ready. Today, look at your neighbor and say, do your part. I prophesy over you that your ladder shall be greater. I prophesy over you that that very thing that you feel like has torn you apart is about to be an elevation for you. I prophesy over you that your prodigals are coming home. I prophesy over you that your marriage is healed, sealed, and delivered and walking in wholeness. I plead the blood of Jesus. I cancel every plot, every plan, every scheme the enemy has devised against you or your family members. And it ain't over until God says it's over. Depression does not know your name. Depression. You will not sleep away your life. You will not be a prover for the rest of your life. You will not be insecure for the rest of your life. You will not have trust issues for the rest of your life. You will not have to pay for what you did in your past for the rest of your life. Today, it is finished.
finished. 